One of the most frequently asked questions I get on my stream as a well-established immortal player is how can I improve my game sense? And while there are almost an unlimited amount of aspects to game sense, one of the most important subtopics is understanding how to read your minimap and what it should tell you based off of your teammates. In this video, we'll break down the importance of reading your minimap and how you can know what to look for when checking it in the middle of a round. The first part of this video is understanding what your minimap tells you about your teammates. A lot of people have never realized this before, but if you look at your teammates icons on the radar, there's a highlighted portion of the map, which references every single thing that your teammates can see in their current position. So if your teammate is holding a certain angle, you can see the exact degree to which your teammate is holding it. And this information is valuable to you because in most instances, you're not gonna wanna hold the exact same angle that your teammate is. Let's run a simulated post plant scenario on the B site of Ascent. Let's say you're the attacking team and you've got the spike down on B site. It's a 2v2 situation in the post plant and you're playing on default and your other teammate is in the back of Boathouse. It's completely unrealistic here for you to turn around and look at your teammate to see where he's holding. When you're in the position of having one person on default and one person Boathouse, both players have the responsibility of holding one of the two lanes that the retaking team could come from, stairs and lane. So if you're the guy that's sitting default and you get no communication from the teammate in Boathouse, it's your responsibility to check the minimap to see where your teammate is holding so you don't hold the same exact angle as them. Let's say your teammate in Boathouse is holding lane, well then you would want to hold stairs and vice versa. Holding the same angle in this scenario does no good, because if you're both holding stairs, for example, it allows a player on the enemy team to scale all the way up lane and completely blindside you in the back. This is a prime example of where having the knowledge to check your minimap and play properly off your teammates comes into hand. Now that we understand the importance of realizing where your teammates are on the minimap, we need to talk about understanding the possibility of potential timings from the other team. And to do this, we're going to dive into a professional match that happened this past weekend between Optic Gaming and Luminosity. Optic and LG are playing on Ascent, and this is round four of the match. It's a full buy round for both teams. And to start this round on attack, Optic takes the entire control of mid, and it leaves LG in a little bit of a tricky scenario. After Optic takes this control of mid, I want you to focus on where the players are for LG on the defensive side. LG has three players bottled up toward B site, the Jet, Sova, and Omen, leaving two players to anchor A site. Sky, who's pushed all the way through A main, and Killjoy, who's sitting in tree room. But with Optic taking the entirety of mid, I want you to pay attention to the Killjoy that's sitting in tree room. You'll notice Moose constantly checking behind him because of the possibility that Optic pushed through their spawn. Moose reads his minimap and understands that there's nobody on his team in the CT spawn. So if Optic were to realize this and take advantage of it, there's a potential timing to be had there. And Moose is very aware of that possibility. And that's why he's constantly checking behind him. Eventually, B-Dog, who's the jet that's sitting on B-Site, relocates to CT to negate this possibility from happening, which gives Moose the ability to focus entirely on Tree Room and A-Site. But the fact that he had the spatial awareness to turn around and check this possibility in the first place is what you guys need to be aware of and what separates low ELO players from high ELO players and even pro players. This example of spatial awareness and understanding timings happens in this exact same round, but in this time, we're going to take a look from Optic's perspective. At the beginning of this round, Optic has all five of their players toward B-Main or Mid, leaving nobody toward a main and the only piece of utility they have toward this part of the map is the chamber tripwire that's super deep near the gelato part of a main as optic takes the entire control of mid the players that started toward b site walk through their spawn understanding that somebody could be pushed up all the way through a main to the point where their trip is this is about understanding timings and where your players are positioned on the map at all times which obviously all ties into the ability to read your minimap and understand the positioning of your teammates yay and finesse are completely aware of this possibility and while they don't know for certain that mod who's the sky for LG is here. Like I said, they're aware of the possibility and they check every single corner as they re-clear A main. This gave them the ability to get the first pick of the round and goes to show you how important spatial awareness is when playing a game like Valorant. The whole point of showing these two examples, one from LG's side and one from Optic's side, is to show you how much these pro players are thinking about these possibilities. And reading your minimap to understand where your teammates are can allow you to fully understand where these timings may happen. Just a quick break in the video to remind you that I stream Monday through Friday on Twitch at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. We have an awesome community and I look forward to seeing some of you guys there soon. Also, if you guys are enjoying the content, make sure you subscribe, leave a like and turn on post notifications so you don't miss one of the weekly videos that we post every single Sunday. All right, with that being said, let's jump back into the video. Let's take a look at one more example, this time taking a look at a potential mistake they made and what they could have done to fix it. This time we're in the 10th round of the match where the score is four to five in favor of Optic. Optic starts this round with a default, taking aggressive control toward mid and Finesse who's waiting outside of A main for some potential aggression there from LG. As Optic takes control of mid, I want you to focus on the three players from LG's side who are all favored in toward the market area. Now you're probably wondering, why are they able to do this? Why are they completely neglecting B main? And the reason for that is because they have a Killjoy turret set up in case any of the Optic players scale up toward this part of the map. So at any moment that the Killjoy turret goes off, they know that Optic
Optic is in B main, but that doesn't happen at one point during this entire round, so they know they're safe of that. Crashy sends a Sova drone into tree room and gets a tag on Mata, this guy for LG. And as Ye takes this space, he gets a couple wallbang tags on him before he teleports back to mid to regroup with his team. But as Mata gets tagged up and as Ye TPs away, he throws a flash into tree room and doesn't get any information on it. And because he gets no information here, he assumes that Optic has completely backed up from tree room and his next decision is to double up with B-Dog and take aggression in A main. As they do this, they catch Finesse in a very vulnerable position behind this box. And without his prowler here, Finesse probably doesn't live. But what I want you to notice is that they completely neglected tree room by doubling up in A main. And after the three players who were grouped up in the mid market area that we talked about earlier, got the trade onto Marv, who's the Astra for Optic, they had complete control of this area. But this is where things went wrong for LG, in my opinion. Assuming there was some sort of communication from Mata telling the rest of his team that he was going to double up with B-Dog A main, I felt it was Dazzle's responsibility to make his way over to Cat to pick up the part of the map that Mata just gave up. After all, Dazzle knew that mid-market was clear because they just traded out the kill that happened there onto Marv and had full control of it. The only possible thing that makes sense here is that Optic is regrouping in Cat to explode through there. And after B-Dog and Mata get pushed off of the aggressive angle in A main by Finesse's Prowler, they back up to site and aren't even aware of the possibility that Optic could be through Tree Room already. And while Mata is able to get one kill, Optic cleans up the both of them with only one player going down. If Dazzle was to check his minimap or even have better communication with his team, he would have been more aware of the possibility of the attacking team going through Cat since that was the only part of the map that was left open by LG in the first place. Game Sense has a million different variables, but the ability to read your minimap and play off of teammates is arguably the most important of them all. Hopefully this video helped guide you in the right direction. Did you find this video helpful? Let me know down in the comments below and check out one of my other videos here.